Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. Um, last week I watched the main event, Hulk Hogan against Andre the Giant with uh, Hulk Hogan losing the WF Championship live on NBC in the most watched wrestling event of all time with 33 million people turning in to see Hogan versus Andre for free just literally a year after seeing it at WrestleMania 3 with 90, uh, well, 93,000 people packed into the Pontiac Silverdome to see this. Because of the success of, uh, of WrestleMania 3, um, WWF uh, decided to try and recapitalize and, and find another way to get Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant into the ring. They birthed up Survivor Series 1987, a review that I've already done on the Stevie Breach channel as well. Um, a very fun card highlighted um, by uh, Team Hulk Hogan going up against Team Andre the Giant. Uh, of course, in this match, we would get to see Andre versus Hulk, uh, but of course, Hulk would take a count out, and this match was also sort of a way to try and get uh, Bam Bam Bigelow over, because when Hulk Hogan was eliminated from his team after being counted out, it left Bam Bam Bigelow to go one man against three, against the three giants of the WWF at that time, the one-man gang, King Kong Bundy, and Andre the Giant. And although um, Bam Bam Bigelow was able to get two pinfalls, pinning King Kong Bundy and the one-man gang, he did not have uh, enough to overtake Andre the Giant. Uh, from there at the Royal Rumble, uh, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant would sign a contract to fight at the main event, where due to uh, the... Misfortune of Hulk Hogan and the fast count of uh, uh, one Earl Hebner, who continued to count after Hulk Hogan had kicked out of the pin. Um, Andre the Giant would be awarded the WWF Championship, who then he gave it to Ted DiBiase, where uh, Jack Tunney stepped in and basically said, you can't just give the championship away. If you don't want it, Andre, uh, we're going to put it up for grabs in a 14-man tournament. And right out of the gates, you say 14-man tournament, that doesn't add up. Because of the fact that Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant were involved in the main event fiasco, um, basically they were both given first-round buys to where they would meet up in the quarterfinals in the rematch of WrestleMania 3. And even though they were going to be crowning a new champion that night, Hogan versus Andre in the quarterfinals was sort of booked as the main event. Um... There's a lot of things that went into uh, this this time right now with uh, Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon decided to tip their toe into the movie business, uh, going out to film No Holds Barred with Zeus. And uh, basically, um, uh, Hogan would be sort of leaving the company, wouldn't be taking on a larger role. Um, you know, there's a lot of fiasco going on about the, basically Ted DiBiase was supposed to win the belt. Um, at WrestleMania, but because of uh, Hunky Tonk Man refusing to do a job at uh, the, the Macho Man Randy Savage, um, WWF had to decide to change all of their plans around, and the odd man out ended up being Ted DiBiase. But uh, to the show, uh, the show starts off with the 20 man battle royal, um, which came down um, to a lot of guys uh, that were on the roster. Um, you know, there's some names in here, but honestly, when it comes down to it, there's no real big names, lots of guys that, you know, were in tag teams, uh, you know, uh, such as like the Rougeos, the Hart Foundation, George Steele, um, the Killer Bees, um, Sam Houston is one of my guys, Harley Race, um, coming out of his big WrestleMania 3 match against the uh, Junkyard Dog was in here, uh, but when it all came down to it, it was Bret Hart and the Bad News Brown. Um, teaming together to throw out the junkyard dog, and then when they looked like they were just going to call it a draw and say, hey, two bad guys got the win here, um, we had Bad News Brown turn on Bret Hart, throwing him out, uh, where uh, Bret Hart would go out and grab the trophy that was going to be awarded to Bad News Brown, strike it over the back of Bad News Brown, and then crush it inside of the ring. And this antic was supposed to turn Bret the Hitman Hart into... A babyface, where basically the uh, Hart Foundation would, would go on to split uh, from Jimmy Hart. They would turn babyface. They would start a, a big feud against the Rujuo brothers. And uh, the history was written from there. Uh, from there, we have um, not Lord Alfred Hayes, but we have the guy that was from uh, Lifetimes of the Rich and Famous. 
Um, I can't remember what the fuck his name was, but he comes out and he basically reads off the rules of everything that's going to be going down in, in the tournament. His name is Robin Leach, is what his name was. Um, a lot of the first round tournament matches go really fast, uh, with Ted DiBiase beating Jim Duggan. Uh, we have Don Morocco beating Dino Bravo by disqualification. Uh, when Dino Bravo pulled um, the referee in between uh, Morocco coming to hit a move on him, and then Morocco would go on to hit the referee. Um, which then would get up to disqualify him, and, and Dino Bravo would lose. Morocco would move on to the next round. From here, we have one of the oddest things in the world. With the matchups, everyone was looking at Greg the Hammer Valentine going up against Ricky Steamboat, and then Randy Savage against Butch Reed in the first round. And basically, if Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat would go on to win their first round matches, we have a rematch of Ricky Steamboat versus Randy Savage, which even though Hogan versus Andre gets all the accolades of putting the people into the stadium for 93000 at the Pontiac Silverdome at WrestleMania 3. You know, they would, they would go on to have a wrestling match that's still talked about today as being one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. All they had to do was get wins in the first round, and we would have that ultimate rematch. But instead, I'm not sure if it's Ricky Steamboat um, basically running out his time in, in WWF. I don't know if he wrestled for them much longer or if they still had heat with them. Uh, for even though they, they put the gas behind him with the Intercontinental Championship win at WrestleMania 3, he decided to tell Vince that he wanted time off to go home and spend time with his family and his, his new newborn son. Um, you know, Steamboat doesn't get the win here. Greg the Hammer Valentine moves on in the tournament. We have Randy Savage beating Butch Reed um, with Slick in the first round as well. Uh, the one-man gang uh, gets a count-out victory over Bam Bam Bigelow, which is very surprising uh, due to the fact that uh, Bam Bam was pushed so hard at Survivor Series 87, um, you know, going up against the one-man gang, King Kong Bundy, not under the Giants. Um, but I think they just needed a heel to get the win here and move on. And, and probably in, with Vince's thinking, it was a count-out, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't like he really got pinned or got beat. Um, but I don't really remember Bam Bam being in the WWF for longer than this. He would be gone from wrestling for a long time. I don't know if he had an attitude problem until he resurfaced in uh, ECW years, years later down the road. Um, then we see Rick Rude and Jake Roberts wrestle to a 15-minute time limit draw. Really good match. But in the end, it's like kissing your sister. Um, you know, the, you don't get a pinfall. You don't get a submission. No win here. So it is what it is. Um, then we have a non-tournament match with the Warrior um, beating Hercules. Um, this is a, a pretty bad WrestleMania match on all proportions. Um, with uh, Warrior um, uh, being put into the... Uh, I was going to call it the Master Lock. But, um, and, and then uh, Hercules not being able to lock um, the hold then. Uh, Warrior was able to kick his legs up, kick off the turnbuckle, uh, and then roll Hercules back up, and at the last second, get his shoulders up for a pin. Um, and Warrior would move on, of course, at the Survivor Series. I'm sorry, at SummerSlam this year. Um, Warrior would beat Rick Rude to go on to become. Uh, no, he would beat the Hunky Tunk Man. And then go into a feud against Rick Rude uh, to become the Intercontinental Champion. Um, then we get back into the quarterfinals with Hulk Hogan going up against Andre the Giant. Really short, non-memorable match. Hulk Hogan not being able to get the best of Andre. Just flat out hits Andre with the steel chair. They go on to have like a, 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 a lightsaber's war with steel chairs. Basically like Star Wars going back, hitting each other back and forth. Um, and uh, basically the referee just steps in and says, we're going to throw the whole damn thing out. Um, Andre and Hulk both um, eliminated from the tournament where we, we knew that we were going to be crowning a new champion at this moment. Uh, from there we see Ted DiBiase beating Don Morocco. Um, we see Randy Savage uh, beating Greg the Hammer Valentine. Because of the draw between Rick Rude and uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, One Man Gang is awarded a bye um, which should be really huge going up against um, Randy Savage um, in the semi-finals there. Um, we have um, uh, Brutus Beefcake um, going up against the Honky Tonk Man. Uh, this is the DQ finish. Um, of course, this feud would continue, but at the last minute, uh, I think due to injury, um, at, at uh, SummerSlam, we have Brutus the Barber Beefcake drop out, which makes it where Honky Tonk Man calls anyone out of the back for a match where Warrior comes running down. We talked about that a second ago. Um, then we see a match between the Islanders um, and Bobby Heenan um, uh, going up against the British Bulldogs with Coco Beware. 
Um, we see a big squirm in this match where basically uh, Tama ends up picking up um, Bobby Keenan and throwing him on top of Coco Beware. But the uh, British Bulldogs are too involved uh, with fighting off the Islanders that they even realize the pin is going on. One, two, three. The Islanders with Keenan gets the win. Um, from there, we go to uh, Randy Savage uh, against One Man Gang. Um, Savage beats him in a pretty fast match. And then in um, the the last normal match of the night, we have Demolition uh, going up against the champions. Uh, Strike Force, uh, where when uh, Rick Martel walks out on Tito Santana, Demolition ends up getting the win uh, and becoming the new champions. They would go on to have one of the longest reigning WWF Tag Team Championship reigns in WWF uh, history with this. Um, and then in the main event, it's Randy Savage going up against Ted DiBiase. Um, uh, this would be a really, really classic, really, really big match. Um, of course, um, with the uh, draw double DQ with Hogan versus Andre, um, DiBiase would be going into the final fresh. Um, and uh, we would be able to see, you know, what's, um, you know, what what's Randy Savage going to be able to do to overcome the odds? When Ted DiBiase comes down to the ring, not only does he have his bodyguard Virgil, but he has Andre the Giant with him. Uh, due to the constant um, outside interference, Miss Elizabeth actually leaves the ring where it looks like she's just flat out dumping Randy Savage, only for minutes later to be bringing Hulk Hogan with a steel chair down to ringside. I don't know if this is the equalizer because of the fight with Andre earlier, um, but... Uh, I don't know, when you think about WrestleMania 6, Hogan uh, versus the Warrior, or even when you think about like WrestleMania you know, 29, Rock versus uh, John Cena, even though Hulk Hogan wasn't involved in winning the championship this night, a lot of everything that happened at the end of this WrestleMania 4 was about Hulk Hogan. He was a big part of the finish uh, with Randy Savage going up to the top, hitting that big... Um, Elbow drop off the top. He got his big moment of, of being the champion. Uh, from there, Hogan would go off to try and make those movies that we talked about that weren't that really big, uh, big success for him. Um, and uh, then WWF would go into um, trying to capitalize off of Randy Savage being the champion, uh, bringing Hogan back for the pay-per-views, of course, with the, uh, the mega powers. Um, who would go on to collide at WrestleMania 5. But before that, having big matches... Um, at uh, SummerSlam, uh, going up against uh, uh, DiBiase and um, Andre the Giant, the Mega Bucks, and uh, this was a fun time to be a wrestling fan. WrestleMania 4 definitely is one of those classics that you look back on, um, but honestly, as a, as a wrestling fan, it's just too damn long. Uh, I just remember being scared to rent this tape at Blockbuster when I was a kid because of the fact I thought they were going to charge me to rent two VHS tapes, and I didn't think my dad was going to let me. Um, but uh, I think if it, if you went to rent it, I think they ended up giving it to you for the single price, but uh, I don't really remember. But I'll see you guys down the road.